Hey yo everybody, Haku here, and uh, it's time for my live reaction, and this week it's going to be a special double live reaction, since I missed last week's chapter for um, Tower of God, uh, because of vacation and everything, I held off, didn't read anything about it, didn't watch um, Kevin's live reaction, which I usually watch, I just kept myself completely clean, haven't heard anything about it, so uh, yeah, going to do a double live reaction here for uh, chapters... 291 and 292 or season 2 episode 211 and 212 and then I'll do a special like double review or review of both of them tomorrow um, so yeah let's go ahead and get into it but uh, where we left off we had uh, Bomb and Kuhn Bomb just took out Yukon and they were trying to get some information and getting a little information on Kaiser and Alphine and um, I think that Inietta had just run into Ron and we were about to have Ron versus Inietta so, uh, yeah, let's see what we get to in this. See if we get into anything cool. Just checking my um, audio because I don't want it to screw up while I'm trying to do this. Okay, I'm into it. Let's do a live reaction. Yo, we see Ron eating the lightning pill. This is such a nuisance. That's an interesting way to draw that, though. I don't think I've seen SIU do a panel like that before. Are you that kid from the Coon family who defeated Hess? Says Inietta. Yo, and Inietta looks awesome. This full body view of him. Again, though, I don't think I've ever seen SIU draw like this. The art's pretty interesting here. Yo, I love, I love how he has the um, gourd bottle on his sash, Inietta, and he has Krishna up on his shoulder, plus both of his swords. And I think his little uh, katana swords look really cool as well. They like have this really cool silver like like stainless silver looking gloss to them. I really like his swords. Seeing that you're here alone without your companions, you must be confident in your skills. Well, let's have some fun. Yo, definitely want to be used, like I'm going to take this image and render it for using for stuff. Like, that looks so cool. I wonder what kind of face you'll make when you lose, he says, clenching his sword. Enough chatter, let's just start. This guy's so weird. Yo, Ron looks so badass. The art looks really good already. Don't rush me. Is there a reason that you want to make your own death come sooner? Shutting that irritating mouth of yours, says Ron, would be the perfect reason, you idiot, charging off his lightning. Yo. And then their powers clash. This is hype. Okay. Ron had a lot left in the tank. I was I was being doubtful at first of Ron versus Inietta, but this looks this looks really badass. Yo, thud. And we see something breaking apart. Hmm. It looks like some sort of tube or something. Yo, and we see Ron and Inietta just jump jumping out around, fighting each other. This art is like amazing. I missed out last week. This is some crazy art. Wow, this kid is amazing. I know he boosted his Shinsu, but blocking my sword with his bare hands? He's really fast too. Yo, Inietta loves fighting. This is awesome. What? Freaking Ron looks like he's firing off a spirit gun going Yusuke Yurameshi up in here. What, what is up with this artwork? This is drawn in a totally different style than how um, just fights and the panels in general are drawn, drawn totally different than how SIU normally does it. It looks so good. Clang. Tap. Yo, this fight looks so good. Ron with the kick to the sword. What is this? This looks so good. Inietta dodges backwards and Ron's running towards him. He's so fast, extremely fast. He keeps getting faster, says Inietta, smiling wildly. It might get hard to keep up with him. At this rate, yo, this looks so freaking cool. Swords coming from all directions. Oh my gosh. Ron going in for the Chidori, going from Yusuke Yurameshi to Sasuke Uchiha on us. Oh my gosh. Is this what? This little kid is already a regular? That was much faster than I thought. Did Dad and that head-on guy plan this? What? You have... Yo, this is a flashback. Is that Ron as a kid? Did Dad and that head-on guy plan this? What? 
You have something to tell me? Nothing can be difficult for him with his bloodline, as long as he doesn't become enemies with the Princess of Zahard. Yo, is that... That's gotta be, um, what's her name? That's Mosheni meeting Ron as a kid, isn't it? If there's anyone among the regulars that you should watch out for, it's the REA family. <gasps> Yo! Remember, kid, if you ever encounter regular from the REA clan, do not try to avoid their sword. Rookies end up dying in vain because they try to find patterns in the REA sword skills. So all you should do is withstand their attacks. Oh my gosh. And Ron charges straight in. I was not expecting backstory for Ron here. What is this? He's going Chidori straight towards Inietta's face. Okay, this is a hype fight. This is the best fight in the arc so far. And I loved Ron vs. S. Let their sword hit you with that naturally strong body of yours, and then strike them. Yo! And then Rack vs. Inietta was so good too, and a uh, bomb meeting Kaiser with an even more powerful attack. What the heck? Oh my gosh, Ron's back! His back is freaking torn up. This is the hypest fight! What the hell is this? Yo, Inietta's face is bleeding. Ron looks so badass. He's bleeding from the stomach too. I was not expecting this fight to be like this. Inietta starts laughing. Crap, you're tougher than you look. And he's scarred on the chest where he just got friggin' chidoried. I never thought you would just take the attack. How sturdy is that body of yours? You must be in the direct line. He starts smiling. Direct line. Direct descendants of the leaders of the ten great families. Yeah, I think a lot of us assumed that of Ron, though. I think. Because, I mean, you know, like, um, what's his face? Uh, the head of the Kuhn family has, like, a bunch of direct children. So I think we all kind of assumed Ron was there. Especially since he knows the Machene style moves. Yo. And it looks like, um, Inietta getting pushed back by an attack. The bottle spills. Huff, huff, what the hell, man. You spilled my precious drink. This is why I hate facing direct line guys. They're so uptight for no reason. Now I really want to destroy you. And Inietta charges in, dodging the lightning. More than anything else, I can't stand things like direct lines and legitimacy. Yo, so Inietta must be here because he's not from the direct REA line like Joaquin is. And he starts drinking. Ron's like, he got faster? This art is so high detail. What? Whenever I see stupid crap like that, I want to smash them to bits. And he charges in. This artwork is insane. He dodges Ron's attack. Comes in with Krishna. Was he pretending to get me to attack first? Says Ron surprised. I've got you. Now. Yo, he goes in for the slash. Ignite. What the fuck? Oh my god. He ignited his sword after swinging it around. That makes no sense. And the attack is coming from behind Ron. It looks like you never saw that coming. You know, the REA family can do anything with swords. It's over now. Yo, the pink lighthouse coming in for the save. What the? The lighthouse? No way. I never felt anyone coming. How? And then Zsa Zsa's on Dan's back. Phew, it's a good thing we're not late. I haven't ran all out like that in ages. He ran, says Henrietta surprised. <laughs> Yo, well, we didn't feel right about getting out of here without him. All the way from outside my detection range? Seriously? So you planned this from the beginning? Ron, get down, yells Jaja. And he ducks. They reversed my attack. This is, Ron starts charging up, the end. What the hell? And then we cut to Bond's group. Oh my gosh. That fight was the hypest thing. 
That was like, that's up there for the best fights in the series. What the hell? I was I was expecting a little bit from this fight, but I was not expecting that, guys. I'm seriously blown away by that one, and I wasn't expecting Ra or Dan just to come out of nowhere. Is that the place where Al that Alphine girl is? Says Kuhn, asking Yukon, I would assume. Yes, but... <laughs> and Yukon is tiny now, like Rack is. And it has the little note, smaller, from being compressed. Well, you better not go in, he says. Yukon is tiny. Oh my gosh. I'm loving this chapter so freaking much. What? Why, says Kuhn. Why would you say that now, after leading us all the way here? Well, no one has ever come out of her chamber alive. It it would be best not to enter. I don't care. There's no th <laughs> there's no time to think about something like that. Says so Coon just walking ahead anyway. Oh oh no. Hehe. <laughs> Thanks um Yukon to himself. Just as I expected. These fools. I may have to obey you since I'm your servant, but beyond that door is the perfect playground of Alphine. You have no idea how frightening her abilities are. You're finished now. And Kuhn pushes the door open, and Alphine's just standing there waiting. You are the intruders that I heard about. You must be Juvial Grace's companions. I'm impressed that you beat Yukon. That's right. Well, let's say that, says Kuhn. We've come to retrieve our companions whom you took, and to take away Kaiser's name, says Bob. Tell us, tell us how to get to the gallery. Then Alphine just stares at them closes her eyes. You're too impatient. Your companions could die if I were to make one call right now. It's alright. Or, I think there's Bomb talking back. It's alright. You people can't do anything with hostages until you steal Viol's name. Or maybe it's Kuhn. Isn't that why you told everyone about us and dragged us into this? You probably want to steal Viol's name, then make him fight Andrasi to destroy the both of them. Okay, this is building up for more hype. And our companions are already looking for the hostages. We left that to them so we can focus on getting Kaiser. Hey, isn't that the maze? Says it looks like a Boro calling out to Lariun. Shut up and follow me, says Ryun. You're very confident. So, I don't see Juvial Grace, the star of our show. And then Bomb walks forward. That's me. I'm Juvial Grace. So tell us how to get to the gallery. Was the long hair a wig? She, she says, yeah, says Bomb. She starts laughing. <laughs> Very amusing. I never thought a Slayer candidate from FUG would be such a cute kid. A wig. I never even imagined it. Hey, why the hell are you laughing, says Coon. If you want to see the real impatient one, you should meet the alligator. Fine. I'll tell you how to get to the gallery, says Alphine. What? <laughs> Yukon in the background. Yukon's hilarious looking. Well, that was easy, thinks Goon. In return, I have a condition. Prove it to me. Prove it, they ask. That's right. Prove, the mi prove to me that you have a right to release Kaiser from that restraint. A restraint that's been binding her for over a thousand years. Yo, and we see Kaiser sitting alone in the th throne room. Oh my gosh. I, I'm so pumped to learn more about Kaiser. And that fight, that fight was insane. One of the best in the entire series. I wasn't expecting that from Ron versus Inietta. That was, that was so good. It was so good, guys. I can't, I can't see a single bad thing. Like, I'm going to do the review tomorrow and everything, but I can't see this getting lower than like a 9 out of 10. It might even get a 10 out of 10 for me. Like, i got to read it a few more times, but oh my gosh, it was insane. So, uh, I guess that means it's time to go ahead and move on to uh, chapter chapter 292, or season 2, episode 212, and uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, it feels so good having a second chapter to read. Okay, looks like we have Andrasi. Crap. How are we going to find the ten bosses in this huge place? Why would you guys complicate something that could be resolved so simply? Hope they just come at me first, says Andrasi. She looks back. Come out. Whoever you are. And we see um, the uh, hair of the yellow-haired twin peeking out of one of the entrances. What? Kaiser is being restrained. What do you mean? Says Bomb. 
You mean that Kaiser's ruling over this place under the orders of someone else and not her own will? Says Kuhn. That's right. This place is currently being ruled by the Lopobia family. One of the ten great families and the ruler of this floor. Yo, that reveal. What? Lopobia family is the tenth great family? Okay, I don't think anybody predicted that. Like, of all the predictions and stuff I saw, I did not... I didn't think that Lopobia was going to be the tenth family. Hype for Bia family. Hype for the princesses. What? Kaiser is from the Lopo Bia family too, says Alphine. Yo, and and the freaking reveal from for Kaiser's family too. Kaiser is from the 10th family like a bunch of people were guessing, but the 10th family is the Bia family. What the heck? She's not in the direct line, but she was a rising star even with, with even greater skills than them. She was what you might call a genius. And in the year that she turned 14, the Zahard family which highly valued her outstanding potential, is said to have selected her to be a princess of Zahard. Yo, young Kaiser looks so badass. What? A princess of Zahard? Kaiser was chosen to be the princess, but why is she like this now, says Kuhn. I thought that Kuhn already knew she was chosen to be a princess. Or no. Androssi told Bomb, but I figured Kuhn would have known as well. Huh. It's a complicated story. Do you know about the Lopobia family, says Alphine? Well, sort of. The head of the Lopobia family is the strongest anima in the tower. Oh my god. This panel, the head of the Bia family. Look at this dude. What? This dude looks so badass. It's said that he was able to command every mystical creature, animal, and even human in the tower. Most of his children are born with talents. I, I'm hyped for the Bia family. What the hell? This dude looks so cool. The strongest anima. What the hell? The Lopo Bia family is divided into 20 cadet branches, headed by the 20 animals which he commanded. Each of the branches is born with different special abilities. Kaiser was from the Grey Wolf family, one of the 20 branches. The Grey Wolf family was a branch which didn't really have anything special about it compared to the other branches. Yo, and that's why when um, Kaiser met Bomb, Bomb saw like the aura that was like the shape of the wolf head or whatever. It's, at some point, there were rumors going around that she'd be selected as the Princess of Zahard. Being the Princess of Zahard means power and honor. Because of this, the Grey Wolf clan quickly gained power. Yo, and we see little kid Kaiser. I was one of the attendants, which the main, pam main family prepared for. I saw her closer than anyone else. Yo, and we see Alphine as a servant to little kid Kaiser. The sight of her running around in her family's floating ship was like looking at a small, dignified wolf. I really thought she'd suit being a princess of Zahard. She was a dignified, courageous, kind, and courteous woman. However, a week before she was sent to Zahard's palace, that incident happened, and then Bomb just looks. It was the day when children from the 20 branches gathered to compete. She didn't have to attend since she was going to be the princess, but strangely, she ended up attending that day because the main family summoned her. And that's where she met that boy. Yo, we see a guy with a needle. The boy possessed the most ex obviously extraordinary abilities of any of the children from the 20 branches. She fell in love with him at first sight, a girl who was soon supposed to become the Princess of Zahard, and who was absolutely not allowed to fall in love, had fallen in love. And then Kuhn is looking on, yo, I saw somebody predict that she was going to be um, the one that Reflejo looked at, but I didn't think the timeline matched up, but what if it is Reflejo and they like they make like they make the story fit even now i wonder why didn't i stop the two of them at that time says alphine that day if i'd just stopped that boy from approaching her none of this would have happened but if i were to see the eyes of that girl again who was trembling with her first love on that day i might end up making the same mistake again that's right it was basically uncontrollable 
It's extremely natural for a boy and girl to meet and like each other. The timing was simply very unfortunate. It was almost time for her to go to the Zahard family, and she began to falter. I don't want to break up with this boy right now. Can I really live the rest of my life without loving anyone? And so, she ultimately made a wrong choice. You know, this backstory is like so great. She ran away with the boy. They couldn't escape from the floating ship. But being young, she wanted to tell everyone, I'm not fit to become Princess of Zahard. I just want to live a normal life and fall in love. However, that was all a trap. A trap. That's right. Waiting for her at the place where she arrived with the boy were guards who were from the direct line of the family and soldiers sent out by the Zahard family. You mean... That's right. They had staged the whole thing just to test her in order to find out whether she's really suitable for living as the princess of Zahard. The whole thing was a fake. Yo, and we see the guards with the boy and little Kaiser looking up at them. The competition, the boy, the whispers of love that they exchanged, it was all a carefully planned lie. It was simply a test in order to determine whether she suited the role of Princess of Zahard. Ultimately, she was not chosen to be princess. Hearing of this incident, the head of the family was very mad and ordered her entire family to be imprisoned. She regretted her decision, but there was no way to turn back. All that she had left were regret and self-reproach and a cold heart hardened from being betrayed by her first love. The main family imposed a massive penalty fee on her family. In particular, they sentenced, to, ah, they sentenced her to a very special labor punishment. And as planned, she was chosen to climb the tower. Of course, she didn't expect that she'd have to do it while not being the Princess of Zahard. But having become a regular and quickly climbing the tower, she entered the station in order per to perform her special labor punishment. At that time, the Name Hunt Station was a lawless, neglected area, which only had remnants of the system from a time, from the time of the Ten Great Families. Oh my god, this, this backstory is intense. It seems like the families conquered this place long ago, and were planning on transforming it into its current form. A pyramid slave system, which is impossible to escape, trading the names of regulars. She was the best person to carry out this plan. The family sent her here, promising to use part of the money that she earns on the name hunt station to repay her family debt. Feeling guilty about the massive penalty fee which had been imposed on the family, she immediately suppressed the regulars and made them slaves, and that's how she ended up becoming the Kaiser of this place. After that, I ended up becoming a regular myself and climbing the tower, and I arrived at this station after hearing the rumors about her. During that time, I hadn't seen her. She'd already become the cruel ruler of this station. She didn't show me even a glance of the face hidden behind her mask either. And I decided to serve her again. A vicious cycle of imprisoning regulars, treating them like slaves, selling their names, holding festivals, and collecting huge profits. Kaiser com completed the system in a shockingly cold-hearted manner. For the last thousand years, vast sums of money have gone to the family through this place. So I figured that obviously Kaiser's debt must have been repaid by now, but the massive debt imposed on Kaiser and her family has not decreased at all. What? I asked them to check again several times, but the response was always, it has not decreased. The money hasn't gone anywhere else. I checked the money that was sent to the Grey Wolf family, so where could all the money have disappeared to? There's one possibility. Her family wasted it all. They have no intention of repaying the debt. If they do, then Kaiser would be released, and then they wouldn't be able to get all the money again, right? Isn't it easier to keep charging her interest for the massive amount of money coming in and keep her trapped here? After all, she's practically their enemy for falling in love like a fool and disgracing the family, right? But Kaiser hasn't protected, protested at all in spite of knowing all about this. Kaiser intends on being here, punished here forever, until her family forgives her, and then Baum looks on. If you know of a way to rescue Kaiser from these oppressive restraints, I will tell you how to get to the gallery. But if you do not know a way to do so, yo, shadows start crawling in around them. What's that? says Kuhn. 
then this shadow fox will lead you all to hell. Yo, and the this badass fox is coming out of the shadows. Come out, whoever you are. And we're back at Andrasi with um the one twin looking up out of the um entrance. Heh <laughs> you got me. You, says Andrasi. Liliel Zahard. Okay, so now we have confirmation of which one is which. Liliel is the blonde one, Chiliel is the red haired one. You, what the hell? What are you doing here? Weren't you on the 45th floor? Is that any way to talk to your so-called sister, says Liliel? This is why they shouldn't choose people to be princesses who lack in a basic foundation. Shut up, you bitch. You call yourself my sister after setting me up like this? Setting you up? You're so mean. Wasn't this a clear deal? You're the idiot falling for it. I can't stand the way she talks to me, thinks Andrasi to herself. Ah, well actually, I was just going to stand by and watch, but the situation just got so interesting. Interesting? Of course, now that Juvial Grace has appeared. Plus, I can't believe that a Slayer candidate like him knew you, the Princess of Zahard. This is the mother of all exclusive scoops. I want to hurry and tell Dad this so badly it's driving me nuts. But how do you two know each other? Are you friends? Well, says Andrasi sweating, this is dangerous. It's way too dangerous to let that crazy bitch know. You have so much stuff to hide, says Liliel. It only makes me want to force you to tell me. Huh? Yo, and she flips over her. Hello, Liliel. Still, from your perspective, it's lucky that Viol's participating in this festival. If you use him well, and she ends up kicking and Andrasi blocks it with her forearm, you could end up saving your own life. Use him? What are you talking about, says Andrasi. You just have to defeat him in the festival. Juvial Grace, I mean. A princess of Zahard defeating a Slayer candidate? You may have lost your name, but the Zahard family won't be able to get rid of a princess who accomplished something like that, right? Yo, then Andrasi and Lil... <sighs> Andrasi and Liliel burst apart from one another and land. Don't be ridiculous. Who do you think you are telling me to fight? I'm gonna fight anyway, says Andrasi. Well, I figured you'd react like this. Okay. Actually, I'm opposed to... I'm opposed to it giving you such a good chance to. Actually, I'm opposed to it giving you such a good chance to. Okay, okay. What? As a hard princess killing a slayer candidate? I just can't stand by and let you get all the glory for something like that, right? Kaiser may be satisfied with just making you guys fight, but I think that but I think that role suits me better. What? You mean that's right, it's me, not you, who's going to fight with Juvial Grace and win this festival. Princess Liliel from Lopo Bia fam family. And then Andrasi just stares her down. Have you lost your mind? And that's where we end. Oh my fuck, guys. I thought last chapter was good. I was like, okay, it deserves a 10 out of 10, because that fight is still admittedly one of the best fights I think we've seen in the series, but that kind I've been saying for so long, Kaiser's the most interesting character to me, and I need to know her backstory. This backstory is incredible. This is the best backstory, in my opinion, since Anox, way back in Volume 1. So, I, I, I love this. Kaiser is now way up on my characters that I love list. Like, oh, that's such a freaking good backstory. I loved this chapter and the writing of it. This, this probably deserves a 9 or a 10 as well. This was an incredible chapter. We got two really, really, really freaking good chapters in a row. Also learning so much more. Bia family is not my favorite family. Screw it. They got freaking 20 branches, each with cool names. They're the strongest animals. Each is named after a beast. I, Bia family. Now, I wonder why we haven't figured, like, learned about what spot the head is within the top however many rankers, though. But either way, strongest Anima in the tower. I am so hyped for the Bia family. All of my hype. Um, but yeah, the review will be up tomorrow. It'll be a hell of a long one since I'm doing two chapters and two amazing chapters like these. And this chapter was long as friggin' hell. So um, yeah, this is going to be a very, very long review tomorrow. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because 
I really enjoyed reading those. Those those were two of the hypest chapters we've had in a while, and to marathon both at the same time was incredible. Um, so yeah, like if you did like this video, comment down there, tell me what uh, you thought of these two chapters and what you thought of my initial thoughts of them. They're, they're amazing. They're I'm blown away by that fight st by that fight still plus the backstory for Kaiser that I have been waiting for like I'm double blown away here. Um, so yeah, comment down there and tell me what you thought of all that cuz I think it's just ah, I'm so hyped right now. Be a family is best family. Screw REA family, screw Coon family. Be a family's on top right now, bitch. Um, so yeah, subscribe for more. Tower of God, Mon Musu, starting Boku no Hero Academia. I've done one chapter and I'll hopefully do a lot more sometime soon. And uh, a bunch of other stuff. And follow on Twitter if you want and I'll try to keep you updated there whenever I post anything or push anything back. And that is it for this video. So thank you so freaking much for watching. And I will see you all next time.